why hello and welcome everybody so today i wanted to show you guys another righteous fire variant that i have uh, played this league that is pretty fun although i will say that this one is potentially locked behind mage blood um i have not tried playing it without mage blood um so that's something that i'll have to revisit potentially at a later date but just to remember we had the 100 righteous fire inquisitor from the build guide he uses legacy of fury to clear uh pox boom which was the herald of ash assonance dumbledore's wisdom chess piece uh explode character honestly this is my second favorite build it's super 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 fun and then we have the expensive yet long-awaited low life righteous fire occultist now um the chieftain build and this current character are not really bossers this character could be modified to do majority of content uh, but i'd have to use like a new pair of gloves it'd be like a delirium trap and mind damage uh something else plus one gem glove basically to uh boost up your fire trap but before i show anything i'm just going to go jump right into a map so we've got tier 16 cemetery over here i'm going to throw on my beyond and throw on my sextants actually oh wait i forgot to apply the sextants yeah that's a good one harbinger and doon, doon, doon. what's this physical mobs hunted traders strong boxes perfect beyond it up let's go Alright, this is going to be, like, very laggy. Profane Bloom causes me immense amounts of lag. So the general concept of how this build works is... Uh, I'm going to take a second here to stare at my gloves. So my gloves are called Replica Volkers. And essentially, what the Replica Volkers do is they make it so that my Chaos Damage can ignite. Chaos Damage, which happens to be the Profane Bloom, um, that is 25% of a target's maximum life. That Profane Bloom explosion is so ridiculously massive that even though I'm not playing an Ignite build, so I'm not scaling Ignite Speed... Um, the damage is ridiculous on it. It's enough to kill T16 Beyond. It's even enough to basically, like, map clear with. Um, so I'll give you an example here. Let me go ahead and try to find the boss. I don't actually know where the boss is, so it might take I a second. Uh, the other concept of this character is to make sure that I do not die in a mapping environment. Since we are trying to pushing ourselves to level 100 on this character, we have went ahead and went with the... Uh, Aegis Aurora, Melding of the Flesh. So, Melding of the Flesh would be this jewel here. Uh, and then getting our hold resist up to 90%. So, all of our res is balanced around 90. I'm also currently running 60,000 armor. I could have much more armor if I replace my Sulfur Flask here with a Granite. But just for mapping, I, I don't really feel like I'm going to die right now. So, uh, I have the Sulfur on for damage. Since the increased damage from the Sulfur applies to the explosion uh which helps out a bit for clearing right so i'm gonna show you the damage of the ignite here so my rf doesn't do that much but the minute i get a big ignite that wasn't even a big one that was like a baby one the ignite just kind of adds a massive ton of damage When I'm ready, and not There is another advantage to this character over the previous explode builds I've played. The previous explode builds I've played that utilize assonance uh, require a target to be cursed. This build as a cultist, um, 
I am currently running, and I guess you could do it in the other ones now that I think about it, but one of my auras is a Blasphemy Curse. It's Blasphemy Elemental Weakness. And the reason why I have Blasphemy for it is uh, my Elemental Weakness is minus 52, sorry, 53 res, which is actually, you know, a pretty big chunk of damage. And with Profane Bloom, it makes it so that our uh, curses apply even to Hexproof enemies. So it's a very reliable way of, of a massive increase of damage. Okay, that's pretty much the map. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual character and kind of how things sort of come together. So the general concept is I am currently running. So right here you can see my elemental weakness. So that Ellie weakness is just Ellie weakness with my awakened blasphemy. This makes it so that mobs that are pretty much from like here or so are cursed. So those mobs that are cursed instantly die to the righteous fire uh, that we have right here. Then when that target dies, there's a 40% chance it explodes, causing uh, Profane Bloom to apply. When that explode occurs, um, it basically will roll your ignite chance. So the nice thing about these gloves is they also give 20% chance to ignite. And this is before counting your flammability. Your flammability adds towards your ignite chance. So I currently have an ignite chance of like, I think I have 55%. And I can get another 20% right here. Most of this Ignite is just on the tree, naturally from pathing. Uh, and then you have the extra 25%, or sorry, 20% from your gloves. That Ignite does so much damage because you're scaling a 25% corpse life explosion. So that really kind of helps ease out the clear. When I played the Chieftain version, I noticed that unless I wanted to invest a lot of currency into single target damage, the Beyond bosses were really tanky. You know, unless like Name kind of follows me around or Hoss follows me around, Mammoth was always really slippery and squiggly. So I kind of would just skip him. This character, obviously with the help of Mageblood, um, does have the ability to kill the Beyond Rares pretty quickly. Um, some other things that I have done with this variant, and by no means should you do these to the regular Righteous Fire build. These are kind of like some extra quirky things you can potentially integrate. Um, but yeah, to highlight some of these things. So in my Scepter here, I have Awakened Burn Damage with Awakened Swift Affliction with Phantasmal Flame Wall. So notice my Phantasmal Flame Wall inflicts exposure, which is minus 25. Uh, and the reason for it is regular Phantasmal Flame Wall is 10%. And my Ashes of the Stars has 30% quality to skill gems. So that actually puts me at a 25% exposure. And this is my preferred preference for killing Beyond bosses since this character is farming double Beyond because... Fire trap just takes too long. You know, you throw it, he has to hit the ground, it has to activate. Bamith already smoked mine, he's gone, right? Host already just ran away. Um, I guess Eshin, what's his name? Name just die anyway. Scorching Ray takes time to channel. It doesn't build the exposure immediately. Phantasmal Flame Wall just boom, target has exposure. It's already always doing this fixed amount of damage. But more so that exposure uh immediately applies to my righteous fire, thus making my righteous fire do more damage, thus creating a smoother clear build, right? That's pretty much how that setup works. Um, I've got Determination, Discipline, Divergent, Malevolence, and Enlightened 3. In my gloves, we've got Purity of Ice, level 24. Um, so it's basically level 21, then Ashes gives plus 1, and then my gloves give plus 2. And this is because at level 23, it gains that 5% aura, or the additional maximum cold. And then you can scale that so that, as an example here, if I turn off my... Purity of Ice, you'll notice my max res drops to 81. Um, that's just because of how much max res my current Purity of Ice gives. So, um, yeah, then I've got Vitality to fill in the uh, the rest of the life pool. And then the Arrogance to put everything on Blood Magic. Oh yeah, with Tempest Shield, sorry. Tempest Shield, Vitality, Arrogance, and Purity of Ice. In my boots, I currently have Molten Shell, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Divergent Frost Blink. Uh, what I could do is just move this up here to my weapon, and then I could essentially get another link on my flame wall, which would be so much more damage. Uh, and then I would probably drop maybe Frost Blink. The only annoying thing is a lot of mobs use like Vine Snare, and Frost Blink is really good to just get out of that shitty Vine Snare. 
that's pretty much why this is here. Um, then over here, we've just got a single defiance banner. And then the links for my Righteous Fire are Awaken Burning Damage, Righteous Fire, Efficacy, Awaken Increased Area of Effect, Awakened Ellie Focus, and Empower 4. Uh, so, talk about, or sorry, let's talk about some of the other stuff. Uh, the way you get your Elemental Prolif would be Fan the Flames for your Ignite Spread. So here I just have a Fan the Flames with Vile Reinvigoration. Vile Reinvigoration basically gives me uh, a little bit of extra ES sustain. Uh, naturally, you have to take Zealot's Oath to make it so that your uh, all of your life regen is actually applying to your energy shield regeneration. And then remember, the higher your uh, resistances go, the better you can mitigate your own Righteous Fire. Going over the actual ascendancy choices, you've got Profane Bloom, which gives you the big explosion, along with the ability to curse hexproof mobs. You've got Malediction for extra curse effect and additional curse. The additional curse is being applied from my ring. Um, then I've got Vile Bastion uh, for some extra sustain and stun immune. And then I kind of have a meme right here where I am not really ever doing bossing, so I don't really need Void Beacon because Maven's not really ever around. Oh, the realm's restarting in 25 seconds. And then uh, I've got Forbidden Power, and Forbidden Power essentially makes it so that... Well, I don't have Forbidden Power yet, but you can incorporate Power Charges for your Forbidden Power. Other than that, I've got a Brutal Restraint that's giving me Onslaught. Uh, we've got the Unnatural Instinct. Uh, I've got Pain Attunement. I've got the Energy from Within over at the Melding Cluster. And that pretty much summarizes the build. Um... The last thing is I have a Watcher's Eye with like physical damage reduction and ES on discipline. But that pretty much summarizes uh, the build. So the last of the auras, we've got Defiance Banner, Determination, Purity of Ice, Discipline, Ellie Weakness, Malevolence, Vitality, and Tempest Shield. I pretty much run the exact same... Well, I don't run the exact same map mods my other builds do. So I don't run No Regen. I don't run Minus Max. I don't run Less Recovery. And for an extra oomph, I also do not run a reduced aura effect. If your goal is not to level to 100 and you're okay with an occasional death, you can pretty much run all of those but no regen. Yeah, that pretty much summarizes this character. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you guys did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live pretty much every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. See you guys all tomorrow. Hope you guys had a wonderful time.